Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we are going to try to answer the question, is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition the best mid-size truck? These trucks start at $38,800, and there are four trim levels available. There is the Sport, the RTL, the RTLE, and the top trim level that we're taking a look at today, it is the Black Edition. These trucks do come standard with all-wheel drive, as of 2021. And you might be saying to yourself, that's a black edition, but it's not black. Well, there are three different exterior colors, obviously crystal black being one. You also have platinum white and sonic gray. LED headlights, LED fog lights, and daytime running lights here. I don't have those. Well, actually, I do have the fog lights turned on. Just have to get down there at the right angle to show you what they look like. A very nice look here with the daytime running lights. I like the way that looks. Now, if you're saying, how do I make them blink like that? You don't. That actually has to do with my camera. So just so you know, that is the case. And what exactly do you get with the Black Edition package? One thing you're going to get is the Black Edition badging. Also, the black trim that is around the vehicle in quite a few places, as you've already seen. Also, there is black painted 18 inch wheels and there are two different styles of those 18 inch wheels that you can choose from in this case it is the painted wheel also you're going to have we'll open the interior here and show you, you're going to have the black leather seating as well as the red ambient lighting i want to turn that off real quick hard to show a lot of that but i can show that you have the red ambient lighting with the infotainment screen as you can see and under the hood is the singular engine offering for the Ridgeline, but it does put out 280 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque made into a nine-speed automatic transmission. It is a 3.5 liter V6. Now, one thing you won't find here are the hood struts, the hydraulic hood struts to help raise the hood. We might see that in the future when Honda redesigns the Ridgeline. We do see that now in the 2023 Honda CRV. And something that is very important here, MPGs, 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. And Honda says you should use 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. And the gas tank size is 19 and a half gallons to help make that a little bit easier to understand. And here is the remote for 2023 give you a good view of that. It does have remote start, as you can see right there. And then you're going to find these gloss black mirror caps. It does give it a nice look here. The turn signal indicators are built in to these manually folding, but power adjustable heated side view mirrors. You do have the remote that will allow you to, if you have it in your possession, to push the button here to lock and or unlock the interior. You also have the walk away feature where it will lock the vehicle when you get so many feet away. So if you're looking for that, that is always a good thing, a good safety feature. And let's take a look here at our rear tail lights, give you a good look at what those look like. The Ridgeline logo, and you probably saw the all wheel drive logo earlier when I was doing a quick walk around. Now, something that really sets this truck apart. You do have the traditional style tailgate here. By the way, this truck will tow 3,500 up to 5,000 pounds when properly equipped as a traditional truck will. But here are a couple of things that are not so traditional, including the fact that you don't have those really large fender wells protruding into the bed. That means you can stack a lot more here, a lot more easily. And obviously you can leave the tailgate open if you need to and tie things off or they'll stay inside. But you do have some area of extension right there. There are a total of four tie downs you can see as we have right here, uh, two in the front, two in the rear in both areas, uh, front and rear. So that, the in bed lighting, and then right here, we're gonna get that open up. Like I said, it's a multi-use, multi-function tailgate. So that really helps a lot in a multitude of ways. It makes it easier to load and offload cargo, for example. And what about the payload numbers here? 1,509 to 1,583 pounds. But you have the lockable bed trunk right here, which I really like. That is a good thing. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a couple of things here. You do have the little cargo tray right here if I can get that out because there is something very important to show you here. You can have partitions right here to section this off into four different areas so that you can tailgate with it. It's great for that. The ice will go wherever you want that. If you don't want it in every single area, well, you can take care of that. You can ice down your drinks and snacks and all that stuff. And when the ice melts down, I really like the fact that you have the drain plug right there. And this is a multi-use area, obviously, because as you can see, you can store things back here. You can hose things off and clean things off back here and then drain the dirty, muddy water and clean the area out. It'll all go out through that drain plug right there. And then here is the spare tire and everything you need to change that spare tire. And dare I try to get one of these tray bolts out. Well, today it actually did come out, but you just unscrew those and the tray comes out and sits right back here in the rear of this area. In fact, I'll show you that in just a second, but I do want to make an important point here. Public service announcement time. When you put these back in, if you were able to get them out without the assistance of pliers or something like that, sometimes they're screwed in way too tight and then they are very difficult to get out. So make sure when you put those back in that you don't over tighten them. So now that we have the tray bolts out, they were easy to get out for a change. It's not always that way because they're over tightened <laughs> before they make it to the dealership. But you can see how that tray slides out and stays in place. Makes it easy to gain access to the spare tire, the tools to change the tire, and even the funnel to use if you ever run out of gas. That makes it possible you stick that down into the capitalist fuel fill area and that actually opens all the baffles up and allows you to fill the gas tank back up if you happen to run out of gas. And one other thing I do want to point out here is right here, something else you won't find on all of the competitors of the Ridgeline, if I can get that to open, there we go, is you're going to have the power outlet right there. Kind of hard to do one-handed, but there you go. You can see that there is a power outlet right there, a little bit of space in there if you want to store some things. But quite a bit going on back here that no competitor of the Ridgeline can say they have as well. Two of the biggest benefits to the Ridgeline over the competition is the smoother ride quality than most other trucks on the road. And that's thanks to the independent rear suspension here, as well as having a nice roomy interior. That's another advantage here that it has. It's easy to get in and out of. That is really helpful. Now, I got to tell on myself earlier, I hopped into the interior to do something earlier and didn't do what I often tell a lot of you to do. I didn't check the child safety locks back here. And notice how it's in its down position right here. These are the child safety locks. That's how you activate those. They're on both rear doors. When it's in this position, that means that it's active. When it's like this, it's not. I should have looked because both doors were locked and I had to climb through that pass-through right there to get to the front seat earlier when I was actually taking a picture of the interior of the dashboard and everything from the rear. So <laughs> just so you know, always pay attention to that if you happen to get into the rear seating area and there's nobody around but you. And that red accent here, you have the red interior kind of accent here. I hope you can see that on the screen really well. It's kind of hard to see because we don't have sun today, but it is there. That's part of that black edition package. Now, you have the release right here that allows you to put that seat up and you can do it with the other side as well. That increases cargo capacity. That's really good. That is a win right there. Something you don't always have as well. And then we'll show you the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. A little bit of an area right there to keep snacks and whatever. And the power sliding rear window is there as well. And something I do like here that we don't see in all Honda models. This seat is way back, by the way. So you can see that, well, it's close, but I'm still fairly comfortable. I still have room above my head. Let's see if I can show you that. There we go. And I like the fact that unlike on some Honda models, you have two map pockets, one on each of the seats here. And then we also have the rear air conditioning vents for the rear seat passengers. That's good. And there are two USB ports down here. There should be three because there are three seats back here. So, but you can fix that obviously with the aid of an adapter. And the conventional size sunroof is here as well. What do you think? When Honda redesigns the Ridgeline, 
should that go away in place of a panoramic sunroof? Tell us down in the comments. And in case you're saying, I don't like the fact that there's no door bends on the rear doors, well, you kind of make up for that to a degree with the front doors because there are upper and lower door bends. Cup holders right here to the upper door bend. Well, there's a reasonable amount of space in there, but a little bit easier to get to down there because there's more space and it's a little bit deeper. You have the red contrast stitching right here. And if you like gloss black, you have some gloss black trim here that works its way into the interior. And one other thing that the black edition package adds, well, obviously black edition stitched into the rear of the seats here. That should be in the rear of the seats or rear seats as well, not just in the front seats. At least that's my opinion. So we'll hop in here and take a look at things real fast. Now you only have the heated seats. Ventilated is not available, at least in the U.S., not right now. You have the gloveless glove box right here. There's never any gloves in there, but it's called a glove box, but there's never any gloves in there. Now, let me get back to this real quick in case you're curious or don't know about this. Canada does offer ventilated seats, even though it gets colder up there than it does here in Northwest Louisiana, at least. So we would love to have some ventilated seats. The push button shifter right there, pretty easy to use and figure out. You do have some more connectivity here with the 12 volt and the USB. There's your cup holders and more of that gloss black if you like that and the wireless charging pad. And then we'll swing over here and take a look inside of the center console. More connectivity options there. So there are quite a few USB ports, the two 12 volt power outlets here and a lot of space within that center console. Here's how you're gonna control not only the sliding rear window, but also the sliding power sunroof or moonroof as some call it. Some don't like it to be called a moonroof. So if you don't like that, well, sorry about that. And there is the conversation mirror. Tell me if you use that when you're driving down the road. Don't use it when you're driving down the road. Use it when you're sitting still, but <laughs> use it, period. And looking at the driver's side door, you will notice a couple more options here. Obviously, that's what you're gonna push to open the gas door back there. When you want to fill up with gas with that 19 and a half gallon gas tank, seat memory, two different settings right here, only on the driver's side, but it is here. And obviously I don't have to tell you what all is there. Here are the controls for controlling the position of those heated power side view mirrors. Some of your safety features can be turned off and on right there. Econ mode, the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And let me jump in here. We will hit the push button start. As you can see, it's right there take a look at the instrument cluster, which is not necessarily looking outdated. It looks nice. It looks good. But tell me what you think. What do you want to see in the future with that? I think we have a pretty good idea of what that should look like in the future based on the fact that, well, we see what's going on with other vehicles such as the 11th generation of the Civic, the updated Accord that's forthcoming, and the CRV. So steering wheel mounted controls here, as you can see, you do have the paddle shifters right there and you do have multiple driving modes. So you're gonna go through that right here. So let's go through what those modes are. Normal, snow, mud, and sand. And then you can go into drive right here or you can go into S. Some people call that sequential mode, but it's really just sport mode is all it is. And then if you want to dim things, well, you can obviously do that right here. And then obviously there is the control for your window windshield wipers and the turn signal and controls for the headlights and fog lights. And we also have a very nice and easy to use infotainment screen here. Like we saw earlier, you have that, that red ambient lighting that's part of the black edition package. And yes, another common question, is navigation built in? It most certainly is very simple to use, uh, very, very nice. It does a lot, depending on where you're going. If you're out on the road and you need to have your ridge line serviced or whatever the case is, and you need to find the closest Honda dealership you're away from home, well, there you go. You can do it right there. Honda making that very simple for you. Quite a few other options there. I don't really have to tell you what all is there. And obviously you can pair your phone. The good news is you can pair your phone wirelessly. You don't have to connect a USB cable to do that. That's always a good thing. You've got the in-bed audio that you can turn on and you have your dual zone climate control here. Let's turn that on real quick. We'll turn that fan speed down and it does not need to be on low today. So we're gonna turn that up a little bit because 
it is rather chilly outside today compared to what we normally have here in northwest Louisiana. And like I said, then our heated seats only. We could actually use that today again because of the temperature. A little bit of storage right here. We've already taken a look at what all is right there. But that really only leaves us with one thing, and that is the test drive. Well, I tell you what, before we do that, one more thing here. Yes, you have the vanity mirrors, and we will move the visor out of the way there and show you how far back that goes. That's good because if the sun is an issue, it will block that out in your peripheral vision, making driving a lot easier. Okay, it's time for the test drive, and if you notice a difference in the audio quality, it's because I goofed and did not realize that the external microphone was not hooked up properly for the test drive. So, I'm just going to have to remember what I said and do a voiceover. So, here we go. Here's the thing about driving the Ridgeline. Number one, even though it is basically the same width as a full-size truck, which most of its counterparts are within the industry, the one thing that is different is the Ranger. It's a little more narrow, but other than that, the trucks are pretty much the same width. But even at that, the Ridgeline is very nimble, very easy to get around, very maneuverable, it has a very tight turning radius. It does a great job of helping you out. One thing I do wish the Ridgelines had that they had in the past is Honda Lane Watch. That was the camera system that lets you see what was in your blind spot on the right-hand side of the vehicle. Honda has phased that out over the course of time. I don't know if it's available on any vehicles now. I don't believe it is. But I like that and wish it was still here. In fact, it would be nice to have it on both sides. So when you turned your blinker on, you had cameras under the side view mirrors, or the side view mirror on the right side at least, that showed you what was next to you. Kind of an easy thing, but like I say, with blind spot monitoring, well, not necessarily a need anymore, but it was definitely something I enjoyed. But you can see very well out of the ridgeline no matter what, so not necessarily a problem in that respect. Obviously, the ride quality is exceptional, not typical of your normal truck, whether it's full size or mid size, is what we have here. But for those who still want the functionality of a truck with a reasonable size truck bed, it may not be six feet or longer like a full size truck, and you may not tow very often, well, this is the perfect truck for you. It has plenty of interior space. It's very comfortable. The seating itself is comfortable. There is so much space throughout this truck. And horsepower wise, a lot may say 280 horsepower. Is that really enough? Well, yeah, it could probably be increased and wouldn't hurt a thing, that's for sure. However, it does seem that the Ridgeline gets down the road with absolutely no problem whatsoever getting up to speed, although I will say it would be great to get a loaner one day that I could hitch a trailer up to and see how well it tows 3,500 to 5,000 pounds or how well it hauls 1,509 to 1,583 pounds worth of payload. Maybe we'll get to do that one day. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But either way, the Ridgeline is definitely something that any person should consider who is in the market for a mid-size truck. So tell me down in the comments section, do you believe that the 2023 Honda Ridgeline is the best mid-size truck? It obviously competes with models such as the Nissan Frontier, the Chevrolet Colorado, the GMC Canyon, the Toyota Tacoma, and there are obviously others as well. So tell me what you think. Is this the best option for a mid-sized truck? Tell me why you answered the way that you did. Gotta say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Ridgeline Black Edition for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you want to know about other vehicles, trucks, SUVs, cars, whatever that you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that is on the screen right now and I will see you there.